Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Altit. I'm a neonatologist at the Montreal Children's Hospital at the McGill University Health Center. And uh, this module from the Neocardio Lab is uh, based on um, information for anabology. So I'm addressing myself mostly to some of the trainees that are coming under uh, our supervision. Uh, but the concepts uh, related to uh, the nabology will be uh, pretty applicable to any kind of ultrasound or echocardiography machine that you may have. So at the Montreal Children's Hospital, we use the EPIC uh, 7 cardiac machine. Um, this machine is uh, made by uh, Philips and uh, is composed of uh, different parts. So you would have the screen, which is a high resolution screen. The middle part um, is your main station where you're gonna be um, having a touch screen area as well as uh, the buttons um, and trackball in order to do some of the measurements and acquiring some of the images as well as some of the Dopplers. And the bottom part of the machine is where uh, you're gonna have some of the pedal for movement of the machine, unlocking of the machine, as well as um, putting in some of your probes and transducers, uh, as well as the ECG connector. Here is the bottom part of the machine. So you can see that we have locked the transducer S12-4. Um, you have to be very careful whenever you lock or unlock the transducer. It's not to be pushed, but gently applied as these transducers are very fragile and they don't require any kind of uh, force whenever we're trying to uh, connect the transducer. And as soon as the transducer will be connected to the bottom part of the machine, uh, it will actually appear on the touch screen and uh, in, on top of your keyboard. And uh, you'll be able to select which transducer you want uh, based on the touch screen, and we will show that. Uh, now, every transducers have uh, various properties. So in uh, cardiac ultrasound, we usually use a phase array transducer, which has um, very good properties in order to capture um, information from small intercostal spaces um, and have good uh, resolution as, as well as you know, depth. Um, if you use something like a linear probe, uh, this will be good for um, certain structures, often that might be either superficial or deep, uh, but that won't require to go through those um, intercostal space. Um, so example, using the linear probe might be a good idea for long ultrasound or for abdominal ultrasound. Um, and then you have curvilinear probe, which are typically used uh, in either adult uh, abdominal ultrasounds or um, in situations such as uh, fetal uh, ultrasounds. So um, in our context, we have uh, three probes. We have the S12, which is the neonatal cardiac probe, which has the property of having a high frequency, which means that the ultrasound will have um, shallower penetration, so it's not a deep penetration, but it provides a very good resolution. Uh, whenever the hertz are increasing, so for example, our adult probe is at 5 megahertz or 5 to 7, and it gives you um, more of a deeper penetration, but with uh, some loss on the resolution. So here it outlines the lower pedal. Uh, as you can see, uh, depending on the position of the pedal, you're able to uh, manipulate the machine. Um, whenever it's completely down, it's, the machine is completely locked. And whenever uh, it's in the middle, um, it means that the machine uh, has the four wheels unlocked. Um, and if you actually put the pedal completely up, it will break um, the, the the pedals, uh, sorry, it will break the, the, the uh, steering wheels uh, in one uh, single position of movement. Um, below the actual uh, cart, you have uh, in between the main uh, tracking area and the actual handlebar, 
uh, a button that will light up only when uh, the machine is completely locked. If you press on this button, uh, you'll be able to actually move in many directions your actual station so that you can adjust yourself to, uh, whenever you're at uh, the patient's bedside. So it's quite useful so that you can make sure that you have uh, an ergonomical uh, environment for this particular machine. So here you can find the power button uh, at the zone uh, marked by a two. So the power button is uh, on top and below that you can see that there's kind of a crescent moon. The crescent moon is um, used to put on pause. So it's especially valuable whenever you're going from one patient to another so that you don't have to stop and restart the machine. Basically you won't be able to scan uh, when the machine is on pause. You still have to replug your machine, but at least you don't have to completely shut down and restart uh, the actual machine. So that's quite useful. So here you have a top view. You can see that in the middle you have a track uh, ball, which is basically like using a mouse. Uh, and on both sides you have two uh, buttons, uh, like a right and left sided click of a mouse, which will appear on the main screen, um, showing uh, what each of those buttons are doing depending on which mode you're using. Um, the bottom, sorry, the top screen is a touch screen, which will be kind of your main area where you're gonna be uh, selecting your probes, uh, selecting uh, some of the important parameters that you'll be applying on your images, uh, some of the measurements, for example. Um, and uh, what you can see on uh, the bottom of the touch screen are little buttons that are actually little wheels that you can either press or turn. And these buttons will actually um, light up and represent uh, different options, which will correspond to the bottom line of the touch screen. So for example, if you're changing um, elements such as your harmonics and resolution, uh, or the frames that you want to record, the beats um, that you're going to be record that you're going to be uh, recording, or the amount of seconds for each clip uh, will depend on one of these buttons. The second line of button, uh, the middle one says 2D. So that's always to bring you back to your grayscale 2D images. Next to that, on the left, the two buttons. The first one is the CW, and then the PW. The CW Doppler is whenever you're asking the machine to do uh, an integration of Doppler all across the line of integration. So you're interested in looking at a velocity um, throughout the line of interrogation. So an example would be a high velocity gradient, such as pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, VSD that has high velocity, so quite restrictive. Um, so those are elements where uh, you might be using your CW Doppler. Um, if you turn the wheel of the CW Doppler, you'll increase the actual gain of the CW. Same thing for the PW, which is the next uh, little button uh, in between CW and 2D. Um, this button allows you to do a pulse wave Doppler, which basically asks um, the machine to provide you uh, the Doppler uh, velocity exactly at the zone of interrogation. So instead of looking at the entire line of interrogation, you're actually looking at where your cursor is going to be. And it's with the trackball that you actually position the cursor uh, within the structure that you want to inquire. An example of the use of pulse wave Doppler would be, for example, if you want the if you want to measure the velocity time integral in the pulmonary artery at the tip of the valve, if you want to look at the stroke distance uh, at the uh, left ventricular outflow track, if you want to measure the velocities at the inflow of the left ventricle of the right ventricle, uh, such as that if you want to have an assessment of diastolic function. Um, so it will provide you with usually low velocity types of uh, measurements. Then you get back to your 2D uh, button, which if you turn, you will increase or decrease the gain. The next button is called color, which uh, allows you to create a box of color. Uh, color will uh, uh, allow you to visualize uh, blood flow. Um, the convention is that uh, red comes towards the probe and blue goes away from the probe. 
and uh, based on your uh, box, uh, you're able to uh, put your color on various structures of the image that you're currently acquiring. Um, now, you might want to use uh, or adjust the amount of filtration that you're doing based on the velocity of the blood flow. So, for example, if you're looking at a structure with an expected low blood uh, flow velocity, such as palmary veins, you might want to filter uh, at a lower speed versus if you're looking at something at higher speed, uh, such as aortic stenosis or uh, pulmonary stenosis, or if you're looking at blood flow in the aorta, uh, you might want to increase the filter of your, of your blood flow velocity. Uh, some, some textbook will refer to that as the Nyquist. And so the Nyquist will usually appear um, on the line just above that line of buttons. So the first line of button uh, starting from the top completely to the left. So the button completely to the left will correspond on the touch screen to the velocity, as well as the uh, baseline of the flow that uh, velocity pattern on the Doppler, because your baseline might be up or down on your image that you want, might want to adjust. Now, going back to the line where the 2D button is, the last button to the right is a 3D. Uh, so it's if you want to acquire some uh, 3D rendering, if you have a 3D probe. So, so some of the probes by Philips are X-matrix -matrix probes, and you're able to use that to uh, actually uh, visualize some of the structures in 3D. Then we go to the main area. So we spoke about the trackball, which allows you to move your cursor, move your pointer. Uh, next to the trackball, uh, on either side, you have two important buttons that will change in their functions depending on um, what appears to be um, on the screen. Um, and so um, this is of importance because, um, for example, if you need to increase your color box size or move your color box size, you might have to press on such of these buttons. Uh, completely to the right of that area, you'll see something called eye scan, which is a button that will automatically attempt to um, adapt your image so that it's at the best quality. It's uh, really by preference of user. You can use it if you are used to it. I prefer to actually uh, manually adjust my images. The button uh, below that is uh, acquire. So uh, you have to be careful depending on how your machine is set up, if you want to acquire it in raw data or if you want to acquire it in uh, compressed data. And it depends really on how your machine was presetted. So um, typically uh, you might use the freeze button just under acquire um, to restart your images and then uh, use your acquire button to store some of the images that you're acquiring. Um, you will notice uh, just to the right of that three buttons uh, that are round, circular, and one that is a square. The square one tells you acquire two, and that's really uh, to provide you with another preset in case you want to have a specific button to download some of the raw images, uh, raw data, uh, instead of having the compressed one. Now, uh, the M mode on this particular keyboard does not appear. It's because it's um, often the button that is assigned to M mode is the button on top of the number five. So the uh, middle button of the first series of circular buttons. And whenever it appears, uh, typically on the screen, it tells you M mode and you're able to, to use that as the M mode. Similarly, the TDI will only appear uh, on the touch screen for uh, this version of the machine. Although you will find um, a keyboard that is uh, touch screen on the main touch screen uh, layout, um, you have also the option of a retractable keyboard just under the main panel that you can use. So this is an example of showing you the layout of the touch screen. So as you can see on top, you have uh, the tab for the patient. So in order to select the patient in which you're starting your scans, and you may also input the name manually as well as the file number. Uh, and next to that, you'll see appear uh, all your ultrasound probes. And so you would click on uh, your ultrasound probe to select the one you want to use. And so this is an example. If you click on patient, uh, you'll be able to update your work list and be able to obtain uh, which patient you want to scan. Uh, if your uh, machine is connected to PAX and uh, that you have a system to create uh, work lists. 
So this is an example of uh, one of our transducers. Uh, it's the L157IO transducer, which is uh, what we call usually the hockey stick in uh, jargon. Uh, this is a good transducer for superficial area, especially vascular ones. If you want to look at certain arteries, uh, carotid artery, for example, uh, it's also pretty good in uh, small newborns uh, for long ultrasound, actually. Um, so as you can see, the um, uh, way that the actual sound beams are, the ultrasound beams are sent is in a linear fashion compared to the phase array. So you can see on the right side of the screen, um, you see the patient and then you see X51, which is an adult phase array cardiology probe, and then the L157IO, which is your linear hockey stick probe, and then the X72, which is a pediatric uh, 3D probe. Uh, and so depending on, uh, and you can see that the X7 and X5 are phase area, which means start from a pinpoint and spreads out the ultrasound beam versus the linear, which is uh, really kind of parallel uh, ultrasound uh, beams. So you can choose once you select your um, probe, the type of preset that you want and uh, then you can start scanning uh, based on that. And once you're done, uh, you have to end your exam. So um, I think this summarizes uh, some of the buttons that we find on our machine. The concepts of uh, continuous wave Doppler, PW Doppler, color uh, are similar within uh, every machine. I think once you create your own process flow, uh, you can adjust yourself and get to know your own uh, technology that you're using for ultrasound or echocardiography. One element I didn't address is the M mode. Uh, so maybe some of you are not aware of what is an M mode. M mode is really uh, asking the machine to create uh, with very high temporal resolution what's happening through your line of inter interrogation. So it's really a kind of cross section of your 2D image through time. And it's, it's used often to measure, for example, the TAPC, the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, or to measure the left uh, atrium to aorta ratio, uh, as well as uh, it says the shortening fraction. It's also good to, um, when you are unclear, unclear if uh, there is um, bidirectional shunting, uh, you can always do an M mode with collar on top and you can see uh, the amount of uh, bidirectional shunting if there is or if it's completely left or right. Uh, useful also to look through um, interatrial uh, communications um, and has been reported for uh, the velocity uh, wave of propagation uh, in the adult population to assess the diastolic function of the left ventricle at the level of the inflow with a mode and collar uh, superimposed. So I hope that this uh, nebology uh, module was uh, of interest to you guys and was useful. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to email me as uh, we are very open to suggestions to always make things uh, clearer and um, hopefully useful for you guys. Thank you for your attention.